On a cold winter day in Washington, Cody Anderson, a drug dealer, went to deliver some goods to a customer at a motel. As a professional salesperson, Cody got straight to work. He pulled out the goods and began weighing them with his highly sensitive micro scale. Just as he had measured the weight down to the perfect amount for his customer, maybe a little bit extra to show his gratitude for her being a regular, two men emerged from the motel bathroom. One was brandishing a firearm. They took Cody's possessions, hit him with the pistol, and ran out the motel. Cody's regular customer, Brianna, left with them. Cody slumped down on the dirty motel bed with a bump on his noggin and a much lighter backpack. He felt sad. Gone were his smartphone, his cash, his drugs, his trusty scale, and most cherished of all, his Bluetooth speaker. But Cody, an entrepreneur at heart, didn't let the robbery get him down. Instead, he developed a plan. He contacted several friends to see whether they could locate Brianna, that thieving backstabber. Indeed, one of Cody's friends did have Brianna's contact information. And so, Cody got to work. Cody had his friend arrange with Brianna a midnight meetup in the most public of all places, a jack-in-the-box, under the guise of a drug deal. She did not know Cody would be coming. Cody's genius plan was to take back the things that were taken from him, especially that Bluetooth speaker. But because Cody was robbed at gunpoint, he figured he should do the same for his robbery plan. The only problem was that neither Cody nor his friend had a gun. However, Cody's friend did know a guy who did have a gun, David Wright. But instead of lending Cody his gun, David decided he'd go with Cody to help in retrieving the stolen goods. And so they engaged in their plan, meeting Brianna at the Jack in the Box. At the meeting, both parties were surprised. Brianna wasn't expecting to see Cody, and Cody wasn't expecting to see Brianna accompanied by one of the men who had robbed him. Cody demanded Brianna give him all her stuff, to which Brianna responded, just as if she were acting out a movie, you can have my stuff when you pry it out of my cold, dead hands. And just on cue, David lifts his shirt to display his gun. Brianna and her male friend responded by walking away, but Cody and David weren't about to let these two criminals go. And so they pursued the pair with Cody grabbing at Brianna's purse. Brianna quickly jumped into defensive action, pulling out a canister of pepper spray and spraying Cody in the face. At the same time, David drew his firearm and shot Brianna's right-hand man. He was hit in the chest and died almost immediately. Today's video is sponsored by Lots of Slots, and to begin the ad, let's look at just how elated I get when I have a big win. Yeah, as you can see, I really like the endorphin and dopamine rush I get when I play Lots of Slots. Lots of Slots is a free way to get the Vegas experience of watching the icons spin around until you feel good. Click on the download link below in the description or use this QR code to get $9 worth of exclusive gift coins. It's a mobile game, so you can play it anywhere. It's like bringing a slot machine in your pocket. Except instead of one slot machine, you'll have access to a nearly unlimited amount of slots. Just look at how many different choices you have here. It's impossible to run out of things to do. And even if you somehow play every slot here, new slots are released every week. My favorite slot is Wild Pinata. I really like this uh, pinata smashing minigame here. Now, Lots of Slots is uh, now celebrating St. Patrick's Day, and they are giving away $1,200 worth of lots of cash and another $1,200 worth of free coins. Sign up in time for this event and get $9 worth of coins by clicking the link below in the description or using this QR code. Cody and David fled the scene, hid the gun, changed their clothes, and no one was the wiser, except Brianna, who had told the police everything that had happened. Cody was thus the first name the detectives heard, and he was the first person to be brought in for questioning. The friend who had helped Cody set up the meeting was also arrested. As an aside, I should mention we've already looked at David's interrogation. In fact, it was one of the first videos on my true crime channel and went viral, spawning lots of copycats. Today, we'll look at the first interrogation for this case, that with Cody Anderson. I've interviewed the incredibly skilled detective Maya Atkins for more context on this interrogation. 
I'll add her and my own commentary when relevant. Let's watch. It's February 18th, 2019. The time is 1927 hours. And Cody, do you understand that the statement's being recorded? Yes. Okay. And just for the record, if you can state your full name and your date of birth for me. Cody Orion Anderson, 2892. Okay. And so, um, do you have any idea as to why you are here? No. So, you've been identified as somebody that was involved in homicide. Um, so, that is why you were here. Um, because of that, I'm going to read you your rights, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, I know a few things going into this, which makes you not my ultimate focus. I know you're not the shooter and that type of thing, but let me read your rights real quick, and then we'll kind of go over things, okay? So, Cody, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? that any statement you make can and will be used as evidence against you in a court of law, that you have the right at this time to an attorney of your own choosing, to have him present and to consult with him before and during any questioning or the making of any statement, and at all other stages of these proceedings, that if you desire but cannot afford an attorney of your own choosing, one will be appointed for you at public expense, and that you may exercise your rights at any time. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Okay. Knowing these rights, are you willing to talk to the police at this time? Okay, so if you're willing to talk, go ahead and sign right there for me. The detectives will already be suspicious of Cody just on the fact that he's willing to talk despite not being told the reason he was brought into the police station. Rarely does an innocent person immediately sign away his rights to discuss an event he claims to have no knowledge of. Moreover, the detectives have already implied that the event under discussion is a shooting, a fact that hasn't phased Cody. Cody's demeanor is deemed by the detectives as immediately suspicious. So like I said, um, you've been identified as somebody who was on scene at a homicide. Um, I know that that's not in what that was supposed to be, um, and that things probably didn't go the way they were supposed to go, and that you weren't person who actually shot the guy. Um, but I wanted to get your side of the story as to things that happened. I have one part of the story. I haven't talked to the other guy, the actual shooter at this point, but so if you can tell me what happened, it would probably help mm. me to understand what happened? why things happened. To what? I... I mean, you know what happened. I have you on video, man. It's it's no question that you were there. I so video where? Jack in the box, man. When? I wasn't at Jack in the box. Why don't why don't we do it this way? Where were you yesterday? Yesterday I was at home. Detective Maya Atkins' interrogation style is characterized by more direct questioning than is average. However, it is immediately obvious that Cody is resisting this form of questioning. Maya's partner, Detective Steve Brenneman, now retired, takes a more indirect method. Detective Brenneman subscribes to the idea that a bad lie is as good as a confession and thus wants to lock Cody into a story that can later be picked apart. Maya and Steve have been working together for 10 years at this point and know each other's interrogation styles well. They thus did not feel the need to engage in any pre-planning for this interrogation. All day? Didn't leave? No. Okay. So to get, go through your day for me then. Me and my girlfriend woke up. Uh, we got sex, we ate, smoked a little bit, and then I pretty much just went back to bed. That's, I don't do much. I literally stay at home because I don't want to like, go out and get in trouble or do anything. Cody states that he doesn't go outside because he doesn't want to get in trouble. Taken on its face, this comment is odd. However, Cody has been charged with 38 different criminal counts, 15 of them felonies. Seven of those felonies led to convictions. Cody knows the detectives are aware of his background, and thus his comment makes sense in this context. So Cody, what I don't understand is why, why are we going to go this route that that you're gonna say you never left your house at all when I can clear as day see you on video. I mean, there's a reason why you're in here, right? It's not just because I picked a name out of a hat. Yeah, 
that you were on scene at the scene of a homicide. But I wasn't. You want to call it something different with that? That obviously you guys don't. A robbery gone bad? Me on. I was at my house all day yesterday. What's your girlfriend's name? Sierra Connor. Okay, and was she? She was there with you the whole day. Yeah. Do you have a phone number for her? Yeah. Okay. And we're talking when we say yesterday, we mean the middle of the night. We don't mean like during the day. We mean like Saturday night to Sunday morning early. Yeah. Let's sleep a bit. Do you have a phone? I don't. Not since the other day. How do you communicate with people? In what what method do you use to communicate? Uh, text now and Facebook. Okay. So who have you been communicating with in the last, let's say, two days? A bunch of people. <laughs> um, my friend Crystal, my girlfriend, my friend. But I was just with Red. It's about it. I've, I've actually talked to other people, and I'll send a message and have them got a response or anything. Okay. I'm trying to throw you a bone here a little bit because I'm asking you questions that I know the answers to, some of them, right? I have more information that, than you seem to think that I know about what you've been doing in the last few days, what your communications have been. So when you leave out people that you've been talking to, it makes me not want to believe the other things that you've told me. So I needed to be pretty honest with me. I need to be upfront and honest about everybody that you're having conversations with. Um, There's a lot of people that I've been having conversations with. Um, he said most of them don't reply. There was, uh, what was it about four days ago or something? Four or five days ago, I got robbed at gunpoint. Yeah. By Bree and her friends, she said that she didn't know they were going to do that, but she was going to make it right. And then she never did. And then she sent me a message uh, two nights ago saying something about somebody dying or some shit. And I was like, What are you talking about? And she said, Don't play stupid. I said, What, what are you talking about? I've been at home. So what happened four days ago? Four days ago, she called me out. It will, I was down by where she was at. She was at Motel 6 on 100. And she called me out and she wanted to look with her book. And I had a little bed and I said, well, sure, why not? And I go there and it was me and my girlfriend. We walk up to the room. And when she answered the door, she said, just one of us can come in. I'm, all right. And think nothing. And I go in, my girlfriend goes back down to the car. And I, I'm in the room and I sort of said, is this just your room? She says, no, it's me and my friends. And I said, well, where's your friend? She said, he's in the bathroom. And I look back and I see the light on, or the light off and the bathroom door open. And at this point I walked towards the door and I said, no, two guys come out, one's got a gun, and they tell me, give me, say, give me your money. I said, what? And they said, give me, give me your fucking money. I said, I ain't got no fucking money. And then they, they talked the gun back and he told me, like, all I had on me was a knife and I, they sold him a knife and he said, uh, drop the knife. I said, fuck you. 
He said, drop the knife. And then he pointed at me and told him, fuck you again. And then he put it up to my head like this. And that's when I said, I said, fuck you. And I dropped it. And then they had me sit. They told me to sit on the bed. I sat down. They grabbed my bag. They grabbed everything. And they took me, pushed me over. They hit me and then ran out the door. Do you know who either one of those guys were? No, I don't. Would you be one of them was wearing a bandana like this. The other one had the sunglasses and a hat. We know who they are. Who were they? I've never seen them before. Well, let me just ask you a quick question. If I'm able to put charges on them, would you like to move forward with charging on them? This is an interesting strategy from Detective Brenneman. If Cody answers in the affirmative, he would be, in essence, feigning that he doesn't know that one of the robbers was killed. The detective is baiting Cody. No, I don't, I don't like anybody getting charged with anything. Because I have those guys identified. I mean, I'd like my stuff back, but I know that's probably already gone. I mean, that was the only... I just got a tablet and my fucking brand new speaker I just got. So what did they take from you? They took um, a little bit of drums, uh, my tablet, Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1, and a Dre, uh, Dre Beats Phil Plus speaker, plus a bunch of other little, little shit that was in my backpack. I don't know what all, like, what sharpening stuff and knives, uh, just little stuff like that. Do you have a journal? I have a journal, yeah. What's it look like? Um, it says, uh, let's see. not all who wander are lost. That's great. It's not that big. Mm -hmm. That was in my bag, too, I believe. Is there anything written on it? Yeah. A bunch of stuff written in it. Well, on it. On it? Yeah, it's got it. Um, you saying it? Like on the outside? Mm hmm. No, it was written on the inside cover. There's my name on it. And then I had a little one that had like this little, uh, well, it was black. It's about that big and it had a little, like a little uh, flower thing that I drew on it. Do you want to show them that one? Let's grab the two keys there. Sure. Can okay. I'll do it on the other You know where it's at. In your drawer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you say Brie. Who's Brie to you? How, what's her name? Her full name? Uh, her Facebook's Brie and Dominic Adams. That's, I don't know if that's her actual name. I know it's like her, some guy that she's with or something. I met her through my friend Jessica. We flew out a few times. Smoke together, that's, that's about it. How long have you known her? Just a couple months. You feel? Yes, that's mine. I think in my journal. So, was it, was Bree there when this happened? When I got on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was standing in the room. She stayed in the room. She didn't yeah. take off and jet. No. Mm -hmm. When they grabbed my tablet, they handed it to her, and then fucking, I was sitting on the bed, and then one of them pushed me over, and then they hit me, and then they ran. Okay, and you, how long did you say you know Bree? Just in the time that I got out of jail in November 28th I got out and in between the end of December is when I met her I think in between yeah December I'd say 15th to 30th somewhere in there I met her with my friend Jessica just a few few months is what you're yeah. saying I haven't known her that long how much contact do you have with her not very much like I said just every once in a while like I, 
when she was hanging out with my friend Jessica. I've hung out with her maybe five, six times. And then when she wasn't hanging out with her, I've seen her ran into her at the casino once. And then when I got robbed. Since you've been robbed, what what has your communication with Bray been? Uh, she blocked me first, and then she unblocked me and said that she didn't know that they were going to do that, that she'd make it right. And I said, all right, uh, yeah, if you're going to make it right, that'd be nice. Just the bullshit would I ever do to you. And then and she said that she was going to make it right the next day after that. So I hit her up, and I said, hey, where are you at? And she said that um, she's an average, just waiting for her her aunt to send her some money and I said, all right, you just let me know. And then she said that she was sick. And I said, all right, well, where are you at? Like, you're sick, I can help you out. And then she never said anything. And then she sent me a message saying something about somebody dying or something. I was like, what are you talking about? And then she says, don't play stupid. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know what I'm talking about. I said, no, I don't. I've been on the inside all for a day. Don't you think if Bree was there that she'd recognize you? Yeah, I don't know. Was... Look, man, you're sitting here because we need your help to confirm some information. That's why you're here. So I'm going to fast forward this a little bit, just so that you understand. You obviously care about your girlfriend, right? I'm going to go talk to her after this and she's going to lie for you. And then she's going to get jammed up as an accessory. It's a really bad move. And I'm just going to let you know how it plays out. You obviously care about her. You got her initials tattooed on your hand. In an incredibly perceptive observation, Detective Renneman gambles on Cody not being a narcissist or psychopath, two groups who commonly find themselves in interrogation rooms, but who do not have the empathy to be susceptible to threats on their supposed loved ones. The detective merely saw the initials on Cody's hand and connected the dots, which ultimately was the winning strategy in this interrogation. I know that she is going to lie for you, and I can prove that you were there. I don't want to go down that route. I don't have to go down that route, but I need you to understand the situation you are in. All of that can be negated. And I'm just explaining it to you because I've done this for 20 years now. And I know how this plays out. And there's no reason it has to go that route. But I have to continue the investigation. I'll put you on a phone with her so you can talk to her so you know that I'm not looking to jam her up. Okay? But honesty needs to start happening. Because she's going to be dumb enough to lie for you. You've been my WhatsApp checking this. I know what happened. I just wanted to get back what was mine. And they wouldn't give it back. And I said something, I said, well, give me my fucking shit back. And she said something about having to try it from her fingers. And they were walking away, like I stepped towards them. She turned around and she was standing there and she maced me. And then I hear a loud, pop and I just took off running. Okay. I didn't know what, what happened. Obviously the reason you're here is because I want confirmation as to who you're with. I'm going to be honest with you, I already know, but I have to hear it from you. I just know his name is Dave. I don't know anything about him. But honestly, that's... No, it's not. That's... No, it's not. I... That's all I knew. It was my friend told me to call him and that he would help me out. And I called him 
take the mug and then we are Japanese. Tell the truth. That is the truth. And okay, so you picked him up? Yeah, we picked him up and we went to it was me and my friend uh, Ray. He dropped us off at the Chevron and then he left. You understand the Chevron has about seven exterior cameras, right? Yes. Okay. And how did you get a hold of Dave? My girlfriend's phone. And where's that phone? With her. Where is she? My mom's. What's Dave's number? Uh, I have to look at her phone. It's I know it's C. Four two five. Nice. Nice seven oh something. Like I said, it was the first time I've ever talked How did you know they were going to be a gender? Something told me that. Who told me that? Okay. Are you still going to go with the Dave? The Dave was the one way with me. Chris was the one who told me they were going to be there. So describe Dave for me. You got it. Kind of short hair. A little bit of scrub. Goatee. Wears glasses, um, medium build, about six, two, six, three. And where's Dave live? Uh, Silver Lake. Do you know where it's at? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, let me see the address. It's 11321. 11321? Yeah. What? Second. Street, 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 Southeast. Do you know his last name, man? Can you save me some time, please? Wait, right? D W R N C. Not entirely sure. D is in David. Yeah. W A R T R I R I T. Let's. I got some of them. Well, there's a little more to the story. Look how I know him. That's well. How, why would you just go do like a? I'm assuming a lick. Mm -hmm. it was, I really just wanted to get my tablet and speak through that because that's all. Some tired people always just rip me off. How do you know Chris? Chris? You're my friend, Alec. Your friend who? Alec. Alec? Do you know Alec's last name? Bridges. Okay. And so how did you communicate with Chris? I don't like cold phones. Right. Do you know the code to that phone? We have 10. What is it? It's just the pattern. Okay, what's the pattern? Why? Because I'm going to need to search the phone, man. Yeah? I mean, obviously. You know that, right? Will that make sense to you? Like, I got to prove what you're telling me is true because that matters. You're not the guy that did the shooting. I need to get the guy that did the shooting. So nice. Right? Yeah. And you're telling me it's Dave set up by Chris. And so the phone will confirm that. That's why I need the pin. Say nice. It's the drop in. Nine, right? Twelve. Nine. <clears throat> so who was driving you? A friend of Ray. Ray? Yeah. What car was he driving? He won Geo Metro. Okay. And what's Ray's last name? Tanhill. T A N E H I L L. T A N N E H I L L. Where's Ray live? 
Eastern Washington, uh, Winthrop. We're just over here helping out this girl that uh, my girlfriend knows. And he's been helping us out. Comes over every couple of days, say hi. So is he still on the side? I think he went, I think he might have went home today, where he said something about going up to Demi. Do you know what you guys did? No. He literally just dropped us off. Well, where'd you go after that? After... After the shot, where'd you guys go? I don't know where he went. I took off running. Where'd you go? I went to the show and then I think we went down at home. What do you mean the show? Like the show gas station. I took off running that way and then just down the casino. Did you go into the show? No. Did you drop any clothing? I didn't drop any clothing. Where are the clothes you were wearing? My children were wearing. Where? Clothing donation thing. Which one? The one down towards the lily, but safe there. Yeah. And what about the dude that was with you? Where'd he go? I don't know. He took off running too. I didn't see which way he went. Have you talked to him since? No, I have not. Okay, that wasn't true. I haven't talked to him at all. What about Chris? Did you tell him? I talked to Chris a little bit. He had some things that he wanted me to get for him. And I asked him if he still wanted me to get those things. And he said, yes, are you at home? I said, yeah. And he never got back to me. Because he's in jail. Oh. This is the first real emotional reaction the detectives elicited from Cody. Because he's in jail. Oh. Up to now, Cody thought he was the only suspect. Now he knows there's a possibility that his friend could have already spoken to the police. I don't really want to play police tricks and games with you, man. I just want to be up front with you and have an honest conversation. Okay. Who was the second person? All I know is his name was David. Dave, we were, we, Chris texted me and told him. And then his last name, like he said, it was D-R, D-W-R, I think, I said, I'm not entirely sure what his last name was. That's what I got texted along with his phone number. Okay. So it wasn't Chris with you? No. Why did Chris set these people up for you? Because he knows that I mean, I help out a lot of people and I don't do people dirty or anything like that. And they just robbed me for no reason. And he convinced Ali and he doesn't think that I'm a piece of shit or anything like that. He likes, thinks me like family. I got to step out real quick. Check out what a boss this detective is. The heavens even announce his exit with music. In any case, Detective Brenneman has cracked Cody's shell and leaves him in the room with the more direct detective, Maya Atkins. Why did you contact Chris? He contacted me and told me they were going to be at the Jack Monroe's. And I said, oh, really? Okay. And then he told me to call this guy, text him, and I don't know. So I'm confused as to why, why Chris would just out of the blue contact you to tell you, hey, these guys are going to be at this place. Yeah, him and I, yeah. I think he hit me up, uh, I don't think I'm up pretty much just hanging out and he helps me 
I'll go to the store and boost some things for him. You know, give me a little bit of cash for it. Still doesn't make sense to me. Why would he hit you up just randomly and be like... Well, like he knew like that they were of me. I told him that they were of me and he knows Bree as well. I do. I didn't even know they knew each other until... I mean, like, I know they got once or twice at Alex's house, but other than that, I didn't know they like, had each other's numbers and stuff. So tell me how that happens. How does how does Chris contact you? When does he contact you? My girlfriend's phone. So was it yesterday, early morning, the night before? When is he contacting you? Uh, she contacted me at yesterday about three p.m. I messaged him and I asked him if he still wanted me to give those a couple things for him. I said yes, I mean, yes, well, at home, I said yes, and then had her home. And before that, it was, I don't know what time it was, he called me early in the morning, and I told me they were going to be Jack, at Jack and Lux, and I said, all right. And I got up and got a ride, went and picked up Dave, and then got dropped off at the shed So he contacts you, you I know you say yesterday, but based on the times you're giving, it sounds like 3 p.m. on maybe Saturday? It's yesterday, Sunday. No, yesterday I talked to him. Saturday, he didn't get a hold of me until early, early morning Sunday. Was it Sunday? So you talked to him after this happened? Yeah, I talked to him later that afternoon. And he was still asking if if you got you said. I was asking him if he wanted me to go to the store and get those couple things for him. Okay. And then prior to that? He called me up early morning and said something about a Bree being here or be Bree being at Jack and Box. I said all right and then he just told me that when they were gonna be there and that they were there. So did he say somebody else was gonna be with her? No. No. Just Bree. Yeah, it was I guess. He didn't say somebody else was going to be with her until early, um, like right before we got dropped off. He told me that her and some guy, he said his name, I can't remember, it was like Loho or Solo or something like that. I have no idea. Um, I never met him. And he said, I, just, I was just talking to her and told me, like, I want to get, I want my shit back. Give me my shit back. And, and she went and Pepper spraying me, and then all of a sudden I hear a bang, and I just took off running. So, are all your conversations with Chris over while you're talking, or you have most of them text? talking? What other type of communication are you having with him? It's most of them yesterday, on the phone, and then it was just a couple texts. And when you say text, just like a normal text, or like Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, something different. Facebook message. I messaged him on Facebook Messenger asking if he was up. And then he didn't reply for a couple hours, and then he said, am now, and then most of them were on text messages. So he tells you Bree's going to be at Jack in the Box. Um, what was he going to gain from this? You know, nothing. He was just, they said, we my friends. He just wanted to help me out because he thought it was bullshit what she did. He do her wrong? Or did she do him wrong in the I, past? I don't know. I don't know how what kind of relationship they are. So why would I mean just out of the goodness of his heart, he's gonna set you up with Bree so that you can jack her, get your stuff back with nothing in return. So I I help a lot of people out. I mean, Normally, people don't start jacking like that. I mean, that was the first time I've been robbed at gunpoint. Like, usually, people ask me for a favor and I'll say, All right, yeah, and I'll help them out. And they just never, they say they're going to pay me back and they just don't. That's, I'm not used to that. But 
Let's say. What else did he tell you about, you know, Bree and the whole Jack in the Box thing? He said uh, that she was going to be there. And she was going to be there. That if I wanted to go see if I can get my shit back to go. So, all right. So I took off. I went and picked up Dave. Then we went there. And next thing I know, I'm telling her to give me my shit back. And she's telling me that I got a prick on her finger. And they're walking away. And I started stepping towards them. And she sprayed me. And I heard the bang. And I just took off running. So what was the what was the purpose of taking this other Dave dude with you? It was pretty much just like a, I just wanted it to be a, like just in case because she had her and two other people last time when she robbed me at gunpoint, mm -hmm. and I just didn't want to get pretty much I just didn't want the same shit to happen where I ended up getting shit kicked out of me or something. So I wanted to be a little player. Didn't know what was going to happen, happen. So, what was Dave's role? He was just standing there quietly while I talked to him. And then, when she sprayed me, I heard the bang. I said, I just took off running. But Dave's not going to just be like, "Hey, stranger, I'm uh, yeah, I'll go to Jack in the Box to hang with you." So, what did what did he think he was going there for? He knew that it was to try and get my shit back. And how was that going to happen? I was pretty much, like I was hoping to just actually just take it and run, but she wasn't gonna give me my shit because she said that she was gonna make me right. So I was hoping that, but I brought him with me just in case the other two guys were there again. And yeah, do you know he had a gun? No, I did not. You're not gonna go jack somebody who jacked you with a gun and not know your partner has a gun. Especially how it went down. Because yeah. it's on video, we can see you look back at him like... Well, they got ready to fight. I didn't know he had a gun. Who? Dave. I didn't know he had a gun. I'm just fell. I don't want to be around guns. What, uh... I hate guns. What did the other guy say, the guy that was with Bree? Uh, he kept just, like, running his mouth, talking shit, saying that I looked like some 17-year-old kid and fucking... A whole bunch of shit. So I know you're kind of just kind of glazing over stuff, but I got to be honest with you, the details really matter for you right now. So I need you to be as detailed as possible from start to finish. And you didn't run all the way home. There's no way you ran. No, all the way home. I ran towards Silver Lake and then I took a bus the next morning. Where, so you went back to dude's house? No, I didn't go back to his house. I, I went just running and I, so nobody's just going to drop you off, right? That's the one problem That's, I have. She did. She just dropped you off? Yeah. And you were going to do what from there? I was going to get my shit and then just take, take off. Like, I run a lot. I walk yeah, a lot. I got to be honest with you. Man, look, look, please stop. Like, you got to be honest. Because honesty matters. And then he dropped us off and then he, I don't know what he went and did. We ran back to the, the shell and we're sitting there and then he heard him. I, I call the guy that drops off. It's just like, he takes us to Silver Lake to this other house. It's the first time I've ever been there. It's the first time I've ever met any of these people. And then the next day, like later on in the morning, my girlfriend's blowing me up from, cause I had her phone. She had my mom's phone and I took off. From there, I got a ride to the, um, I got a ride to Madison, right to the Swift home. Okay, so you were with Dave after? A little, a little bit, for like an hour, and then Did he, he wants dump to... his clothes in that same bin? We gave the clothes to somebody else that said they are going to get rid of them. How do you know they ended up in that bin? I don't, I was just saying. Because that's what they said, they are going to put them in a clothing donation bin. I don't know. Who was that person that took your clothes? It was Chris. 
when after when Chris took the clothes, that was the last time I saw him. I was at I don't know whose house it was. Just tell him to open it. Yeah, just open it. Or not. So where did when did you meet Chris? When did I meet him? Like the, on this particular night, it was for him to get rid of your guys' clothes. I met him at the, the house in Silver Lake that we got dropped off at. I... So Ray drops you off there? Yes. And then he took off. He didn't know what happened. He didn't know anything. He was just giving me a ride. Well, there's no way you're not telling him what happened when he's the one who, who set you up with Dave. Ray didn't. Ray didn't set me up with Dave. Ray doesn't know anybody over here. I'm sorry. I was, I was talking about Chris. So, Ray picks you up. I know we were talking about that. I skipped on you. And he just drops you off at Silver Lake? So who's giving directions to Silver Lake? Uh, Dave was. He told us to go towards Silver Lake, and then he gave me an address to punch into the GPS. I punched into the address. Whose GPS? It was uh, Sierra's phone. The phone that I had. I had Sierra's phone. Let's see his phone number. I already gave it to you. 425-970-2987. So you get to that address. Was Chris already there? Is that where he lives? No. I don't know whose house it was. He said it was the only person that I know uh, was Chris. The rest of them, I just met Dave that night, just a couple hours before. And then, like, not before it happened, but at the time that it took us from Drive Silver Lake to Casino Road, that's the all I knew Dave. So, how many people were there when you arrived? I had Jack and Mark, were at the house. The house. And it was Chris. Uh, some girl, I can't remember her name, and then me and Dave. Okay. And when you get there, what happens? Well, we, we change our clothes, and then I smoked a little bit and I passed out. I woke up. Dave wasn't there. Um, Chris was gone. And after we gave Chris the clothes, he took off and he didn't come back. And then, like I said, I smoked a little bit and I passed out. And then when I woke up, Dave was gone. But um, another girl was there. I think her name was like Leah or some shit. I can't remember. And then, like, I looked at the phone and Sierra was pissed at me because I've been gone so long. And I got a ride from, uh, what was his name? He was like Dylan. I can't remember his name. He gave me a ride to Madison and then dropped me off and I went home. From Madison? How'd you get home from Madison? The Swift. I took the Swift and then I walked from the station. About what time was that? I was... 11? Still talking Sunday? Yeah. At 11 a.m.? Yeah. 10.30, 11. And you took the Swift down to the Everett the station? station. Right from the station, I walked home. 
So what did you tell Chris when you got to that house? I told him that he asked if I got my shit back. I said, no, I don't know what happened. And he said that when she pepper sprayed me, the other dude flinched and Dave just sh shot him. And that's when he took off running. And then gave Chris the clothes in the bag and Chris took off. Didn't see him again. What about the gun? Uh, idea of what happened with the gun. Did he have it when you guys went back? No. I don't, like, he said that he stashed it somewhere. I wasn't wondering where I just wanted to get I didn't know any of that was going to happen. So when you say you guys were at the Shell station, you just mean the one across the street? And where were you standing? In the back by the, I was standing by the, um, the electrical box. Did you see the uh, police officers come to the scene? Were you there that long? No, I heard sirens. That was it. So that's when Ray came to get you. Mm -hmm. And Ray took off after he dropped you off. Yeah. No, yeah. I stepped out. So for you already answered this. And then when I called him, he said that he was just down at the store. And I said, well, come pick us up. It wasn't that long after he dropped us off. So I feel like you're trying to protect Ray. And ultimately, whether Ray gets charged or not, I mean, that's not in your hands. But what is going to probably help them out is the truth of the situation. Again, the truth matters. And you can tell I probably question you every time that you're trying to, like, skirt off, right? Tell the truth about Ray. He's from Mr. Washington. No, no, I get it. I'm He's saying about his involvement. Like, yeah, he, he was waiting for you. Yes. He called me, I called him up and asked him for a ride. He said, yeah. I told him it was two people that robbed me. He dropped us off. And I said, uh, I might be needing a ride in here a little bit. She can stay in the area. He said, all right. And then we just took off. I didn't know he was still going to be in the area. When I called him, he said, yeah, I've down at the store. I'm like, awesome. Can not pick us up? Picked us up, drove us over late, dropped us off. So we're going to, we're going to have to show you some pictures. Okay. Just to confirm the people we're talking about are the same people you are talking about. Right. Um, you, did you get like a really detailed start to finish? We were still kind of looking. Okay. Before I forget, you keep referring to Chris as Chris. How, how do you know Chris's last name? Facebook, it says Phelps. So when you get back to the Silver Lake place, you tell Chris, or he asks, you said, what happened? I think that he asked if I got my shit back. I said no. And then uh, they said that he ended up shooting and then Chris said, do you give him the clothes? So I gave him the clothes. Okay. You give him your shoes, everything? No, it was the same shoes. I gave him everything else, though. So it's Chris who initiates taking your, your clothes and getting rid of them? Yeah. It might sound like a dumb question, but why is he getting rid of your clothes? I don't know. He just said that he needed to get, change clothes. And I said, all right. Scooby. I wasn't going to argue. I mean, I was just fucking. <laughs> I, I don't really wear sweats. And that's what I had. And then he had given me sweats again. So he tells you to give me your clothes, and you're like, okay, I'll give well, you my clothes. Because uh, after Dave said that he ended up having to shoot him, uh, Chris said, well, you guys can get rid of your clothes. 
I said, all right. And I just changed my clothes and gave me the old ones. So really to change your identity. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. How long did you stay at that house? I, like I said, I passed out. I woke up about 9.30 and then I got a ride right after I woke up and I got the swift at about 3.30, 11. I walked home from the station. So who in that house did you tell about what had happened? Uh, just Chris and just Chris Dave. I, I, I don't know if uh, Dave told me anybody while I was sleeping. Like I said, when I woke up, Dave wasn't there. Chris took off after he took our clothes. I hadn't seen him since. And I didn't know anybody else there. I woke up and I was like, oh shit. And I looked at my phone. My girlfriend was pissed at me. Well, I had her phone. She was calling me and blowing me up on Facebook. And then I told her that I'm trying to find a ride. And eventually, somebody gave me a ride from there to the Madison Street Station where I hopped on the sweat. And what car did David drive you in? David didn't drive me. Ray, sorry. Ray? It was an 89 Geo. What color is it? Red. Like a Geo Metro. Metro. It doesn't look like a clown car. Three people in a Geo. <laughs> You gotta push it like a roller skate. <laughs> Did you tell your girlfriend what happened? No. I, well, I told her that there was a gunshot and it took off. Why do you think David shot him? So she, she pepper sprayed me. And what Dave said was that he flinched and looked like the guy was going to grab something. When Dave pulled the trick. Dave saying he flinched when you were pepper you know, sprayed? When I was pepper sprayed, the other guy, like, I I guess that he thought that he was going to grab something. And then that's when Dave just shot him. At any point in time, did you see the, the male with, um... So, did, um... Dave was had a gun. Yeah. That's yeah. Anybody else? I don't know. Did you see anybody else with a gun? I didn't even know Dave had one until I heard the shot. Were the other two people being aggressive towards you guys, or were they trying to get away from you guys? Well, I, they were talking shit, just like running their mouths, and they weren't really trying to get away. They walk a little bit and then stop and talk more shit and then walk a little bit, stop talking more shit. So your intent, I mean, just to ballpark this was to rob her. It was to get, much, to get even. Yeah. It was, I just wanted to get my shit back. So Dave knew that you're, well, you say get my shit back, but her chances of her holding on to your shit at, when you guys didn't have any communication about that. She's not going to have your stuff. You know that. It's yeah. a dope game, right? Yeah. But you thought she may have something. What do you think they may have had? I wasn't sure. All in sight of them. Why were they there? I don't know why they were there. Chris just told me they were there. Well, that's not true either. Man, stop lying, bro. I'm dead. It's he's like they're gonna buy some dope. That's so what do you normally have when you go buy dope? Cash. And how much cash? I don't know how much they had. All I know is that he told me they wanted to buy some dope and that they were there. I said, all right. So did you have a gun? No. He said, I don't, I don't fuck with guns. I don't like guns. So the only gun you saw was Dave's? Yeah. Was dude trying to pretend like he was 
was getting Brody? Was was he just like talking and trying to be cool and walk away? Wait, what? He was he kept saying something about fucking like he was acting tough and then he tried to walk away and then stop and start acting tough and then start walking away. Well, I mean, you know, like is he just trying to preserve his manhood but he knew what was going on? Like, was he trying to be like the man in front of the girl and then but was still trying to get out of there or was he like in a fight you guys? I think he was ready to fight. I'm not, I wasn't paying attention to him. I was pretty much just like focused on Bree telling her that, giving my shit, like, what the fuck did I do? Okay. So, what I need from you is to run through everything start to finish. No more of the half truths, no more of the nothing, all right? Because it matters. And it matters with what you get charged with, right? I mean, there is a range of stuff you could be charged with. You understand that, right? I mean, technically, you are an accessory to murder in the first degree. Now, whether you get charged with that or robbery or something else is entirely going to be based on how the case plays out. And a big part of that is your statement. And the benefit you have sitting there now, being the first person I talk to, is you get your story on paper before the other person. Because that other person is probably going to be blaming you for everything. Because he doesn't have any allegiance to you, right? So the half-truths that you're telling to protect these people, ultimately, my goal is to get the guy that shot somebody for pretty much no reason off the streets because that guy's dangerous. Okay? So I need you to run through the story. I need you to run through it detailed. Me and my girlfriend were laying in bed. I was asleep. She was asleep. And then we get a call. And she wakes me up and says, It's Chris. And at first I said, Just leave us, but she already answered. We went out, and I went out, Hello. And he says that um, Bree's going to be at the Jack in the Box in about 15 minutes. And I kind of woke up and I'm like, Yeah, fuck it. It's like, If you want a chance to get your shit back, you know, it's a chance. And I'm like, All right. So uh, I called Ray, and Ray said that he had a word to give me a ride. And in the time that Ray left wherever he was to come to us, Chris sent me a text saying, this is Dave, give him a call, he'll help you. I said, all right. So I called Dave. Uh, Dave said, that, oh, Chris says you're good people, and you're good people with me. I'm like, all right. So, Dave gives me his address. After Ray gets to me, we go to him. And he said something about a 12 gauge. I said, no, no guns. And then uh, we went, picked up Dave, went to Casino Road, actually went past Casino Road to 75th. The guy who Ray doesn't know his way around the area. He always drives around. Like, well, be like, turn here, like, take a right. And he just go past it. Oh, shit, sorry. He turned around, went back towards the. Uh, he dropped us off his Chevron, and then he took off. We went from Chevron, we walked around by the Swift stop up towards the kind of jacking box. And then we were sitting around the corner, and I thought I saw a breeze. So I said, I think that's her. And then we went walking up. And she's got a bandana on, but her face like this. He's got a big poofy black jacket. And up, um, I told her, I said, give me, if she said, are you kidding me? I'm like, no, give me, my, give me your shit. And she said, no. And I said, well, give me your fucking shit. Like, this is fucking, this is get back. Give me your shit. And she kept saying no, and they, you know, he started saying shit like, oh, you look like you're 17, you fucking started talking a bunch of shit. I don't remember what all he said. I was just kind of zoning out folks and on her, like, I wanted to fucking, I knew her. And, uh, when they started walking away, we followed them a little bit, just a couple steps. She stopped and she said something, what did she say? She said, uh, that she's not giving me anything. And then he started running his mouth again and said I didn't really pay much attention to him. Um, and 
they started walking from the sidewalk over by the curb. And that's where she said that you gotta pry it from my fingers. And then she fucking grabbed pepper spray, like she just spray spraying me and I put my head down like this. And the next thing you know, I hear a loud bang and I just take off running. We went to the- Let me pause you. When did you know that that dude had a gun? As soon as I heard the shot. You didn't know he had a gun before that? No. It was on the video, he lifts up his shirt when you're looking back at him. And he was standing there like this with his hands like this. I, I said, didn't know he had a gun until after the shot. Like once I heard the shot, that's when I just took off running and found out that he had the gun. Okay. And were you actually sprayed with pepper spray? I did. She got me on the top of the head like this. Did it affect you in any way? No, she hit my hoodie because I was wearing a jacket with a hood. And she hit that and I just went back and was shot. Oh, was the pepper spray? Pink. Okay. And then, so you hear the shot, that's where you left off, and then what happened? And then we went running across the street to the show. And where, where across the street did you run? Did you go to Chevron? Across the street? Straight from where the bank is, straight across. Mm -hmm. Right behind the shell, and then the uh, I had Ray come pick us up. So we just out the Tesoro. Went. Where's the Tesoro? Yeah, uh, down Casino Road. Okay. He went from there, picked us up, and then we went down uh, Casino Road towards what's the road of the Casino Road there. Beverly? Yeah, we went to Beverly, took a right, uh, hopped on I 5 southbound. Went to 128th, left on 128th, up towards uh, was the parking ride, right past it, took a right, and then at the stop sign at the top, well, we took a left at the stop light, and then stop sign at the top, we took a left, and then we just went straight, and eventually there was a the house right there on the left. So, do you know where your clothes ended up? So when you said they were in the donation bin, is that what he said to you, or is that That's just what he said? Should have That's what he said. He's gonna put them in a donation bin. And he okay. kept going back and forth, been saying he's gonna throw them away and it's some garbage can, or just put them in a bin. And then he said he was just gonna dump them in a bin. Did you ever see the gun again after that? Did Dave say where he put it? No, I didn't. But you were with him, right? Okay? Yeah, like I was with him. He changed clothes, Mercedes did take their clothes. But did he have the gun when you guys went back, or did he say he stashed it before that? He said that he stashed it. Where he said he buried it, and that he was going to go back and get it the next day. So he said he buried it behind his shell. That's... So when I got to the house, we changed clothes, Mercedes and take their clothes and throw them away. Or been somewhere. He left. Never didn't see him again. And then Do you know where you were, you saw him buried because you were with him. Do you know where he buried it? Behind the shell, like by the electrical thing. Okay. And then after Chris took off. Stayed up for a little bit longer, have smoked, and then I passed out until like nine, ten, somewhere in there. And when I woke up, Dave was gone. And I didn't know anybody else there. And I got a ride from one of the guys, dropped me off at the Madison Street Station at the Walgreens there, and I hopped on the Swift and went home. What was it buried in? Dirt? Uh, Eddie Bark? Beauty Bark, I believe. I, I think it's Beauty Bark there. I wasn't going to paying attention to him. I was trying to go just get the fuck out of there. Okay. You have anything else you do? We need to show him some pictures and step out and get those. Yeah. Any water or anything? Some water would be nice. Hot. Oh.
Hold. Hold. I can get you a tea if you want. That's all I can ask us. You want me to say, so you know the tape's going to stay running. Hey, you understand all your same rights apply to you? I mean, I have to say that because I'm coming back into the room to contact you, but um, I have questions to you. Do you understand those rights still? Mm -hmm. Got any questions about them? Okay. Uh, are you sure he drives a Geo Metro and not a different kind of car? Yeah. The 89 Geo Metro. Geo Metro. Yeah. Like the little station wagon. Yeah. Ray? Ray, yeah. yeah. Well, wasn't he just at your house in another car? No. What car was just at your house? The car that I got kicked up in? Yeah. That was the Fred Coleman. That's not a... That's not... That's a Ford Escape. What about a red um, Volkswagen Jetta? That's, um, that is very part of a clutch one out there, I mean. Okay. So we had a charge in my house, but I was going to fix it. <laughs> that, that was the confusion, because you're saying a red Geo Metro, and then there's a red Jetta. Yeah. 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 So, okay, cool, man, thanks. So how well do you, uh, all your same rights apply. I know it's ridiculous, but how well do you know uh, Ray? I just met him about a week ago. Okay, so would you recognize him on site? Yeah. Would you consider him a friend? Yeah. In the last week, how long have you hung out with him? Probably um, every other day for about an hour, two hours. Do you know personal things about him? Not very much, no. I know that he came over to help this girl named Rachel, and then she pretty much just ditched him. And while he's over here, his clutch in his car went out. You know, bought the Geo. He had the Jetta to to my place. And I was going to fix it for him. And he was going to give me the Jetta. And then, uh, that's about all I know about him. He's from Winthrop Twist area. Okay. So I'm just determining, like, how I can uh, show a, a photo to you of him. Would you recognize him in a photo? Yeah. Okay. Is this the lot in the box you guys were at? The one back by the fence, or there's another one by the building? And where did he bury the gun? He was standing over by a tree and I was standing by the river. So if you're looking at the box, he would have been to the left of it, closest to Casino Road? Yes. Okay. And uh, does uh, Dave, what color is his hair right now? It's a, a dark, light brown. It's a darker color. And you said he had a goatee and sideburns? Uh, I don't think he had sideburns. He has a little bit of scruff. I mean, it's full. He has a go to you. What? What? Okay. Okay. Can you recognize that's, this individual? That's Ray. That's right. Okay. And that's the Ray Tannen Hill you're talking about? Mm -hmm. oh. So go ahead and um, initial and date. Two eighteen out of nineteen. And if you just want to write his name on there. Okay. I'm working on getting you some other photos, okay? Need anything, man? Um no. Okay, just to confirm, how long you've known uh, Chris? Oh, uh, I met him back in early December, I want to say. I don't know, mid-December. 
last couple months. Okay. Um, and you know, you'd know him on site. Yeah. He's somebody you know on site. You had enough contact with him. Yeah. Okay. Let's follow. Yes. That is who you know as Christopher Phelps. Yeah. Okay. So same thing on that one. Yes, I win, right? Yeah. Be back. Okay, finally, man. This was uh, interesting to me. I'm going to show you six pictures. Someone you recognize may or may not be in there. Have you read? Are you able to read okay? Yeah. I'll have you read through here. We understand that all your same rights still apply, right? Okay. And then fill in at the bottom here for me. For the purposes of the tape, it's 10.05, still uh, Monday, February 18th. All right, so what will happen is I'll flip these over. They're numbered. If you recognize somebody in here, uh, I'll ask you to identify who that person is. And then just put the number on that line. Okay. That looks, almost looks like a... And who is that? It's Dave. So out of those who do you recognize anyone? Yeah. Who is that? Number three. Oh. So write who that is to you. On here. Like what you know him as? Yes, no, it was Dave. Okay, and then sign that form for me. Okay, and then put a the date it is the eighteenth. Tonight. All right, man, so we're going to load you up and see if you can uh, show the officers where he might have buried that gun, okay, while we finish up some paperwork. Um, before you go, uh, Sierra's here, okay, I'm going to let you guys talk, and then she's going to be giving a ride back home. Yeah, what's going to happen with me? You're going to be booked. Well, oh, and it will uh, initially be murder one. So, um, I'm not saying it's going to stay there, 
But I'm going to tell you that's initially what the charge is going to be because that's how the statute fits, okay? I will be, Detective Atkins will be right back in to uh, close out. I'm just going to close out the interview here. So I'm just have you read this out loud to me. I, Cody Anderson, declare that the facts stated on this tape are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. My statement has been made freely, voluntarily, and without threats or promises of any kind. And is that a true statement? a true statement go ahead and sign right there so questioning and statement ended at 22 12 hours on february 18th of 2019 Cody Anderson was sentenced to three years of prison for his robbery attempt. Thanks for watching, and shout out to Maya Atkins.